Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church here on this first Sunday in the Lenten season. Please stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is A Mighty Fortress.
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
when you see that when you see that survey in your email, it really is critical uh, that you fill that survey out and get it back to us because that survey is the, is gives us the information that will tell us what kind of associate pastor you think you think Trinity needs moving ahead. So we're going to want to know something about where you think the church is going and what you think is important. If you don't fill that out, somebody else gets to choose. So it really is important that, that we all do that work together. So that is, you know, that is something that is happening. And then finally, uh, don't forget those of you who are serving on our congregation council that we will be meeting this Wednesday evening. And finally, thank you for uh, the mission team for the work they did this past week. Uh, they put together a, a number of boxes that will be put out uh, where people can come and take the food they need and to leave food uh, to share. So uh, they're called blessing boxes. And uh, we'll look, now that they're, they're finished making them, uh, we're hoping that they will be able to be put up uh, fairly soon. So thank you for that. Those are the announcements for this day. We will continue our worship with a read. A reading from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds and domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. With the bow, when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it, and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
St. Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we have talked about at other times, the Gospel of Mark moves briskly. Jesus' baptism is covered in just two sentences, and the temptation in the wilderness is covered in just two more sentences. But that doesn't mean that Mark doesn't get to the heart of things. First, as he is coming up out of the water, Jesus saw the heavens torn apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. At the other end of Jesus' ministry, at the opposite end of Lent, when Jesus dies upon the cross, the heavens are rent again as the veil in the temple is torn in two from top to bottom. Jesus' ministry there coming to a close, but also a sign that the kingdom of God and you and I are no longer separate. Theologians have argued about Jesus' baptism for ages, it seems. Some saying, why did he need to be baptized when, of course, he was without sin? Others simply taking the evangelist that his word, let it be so for now that all righteousness may be fulfilled. Some arguing that Jesus' baptism was sort of a hostile takeover of John's ministry. And others have said that indeed John prepared the way and that Jesus comes to fulfill that way to keep the promises that were made through John. But if we dwell too much on those kinds of arguments, I think we tend to overlook that in Mark's Gospel, some incredible things happen. And the first is that immediately after his baptism, no matter what that baptism is about from the perspective of some, Jesus is driven immediately into the wilderness. And he is not driven there by need. He is not driven there by some evil force. He is not driven there by any foreign entity. But he is driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Immediately after his baptism, Jesus is driven into the wilderness to the place where demons dwell by the Holy Spirit. As if to say, you by baptism are driven out into the troubles of the world, into direct confrontation with Satan. A confrontation in which Satan would make Tempting God seem like the right thing, the logical thing, and the good thing to do. After all, 
after 40 days of starvation, making for oneself a little bread seems like a rather small thing. And yet, as Jesus turns past each of these temptations, the stakes for the next one get higher. So we move from making just enough to provide for yourself some daily bread to Satan suggesting that Jesus break the first commandment by submitting in worship to Satan himself. I think it's important for us to understand this, that in the first century, Jesus' followers wanted to know, they wanted to understand how Jesus' baptism could possibly be related to their own. And Mark explains to them, first of all, that baptism is not a static event, and it certainly is not an event that removes us from the troubles of this world. Instead, it is an event that bookends our lives from our adoption as children of God to our entry into God's kingdom on the day that we die, Mark explains that baptism is dynamic. Now that is something that we usually don't talk about when we bring children to the baptismal font. We gather around the font and we talk about them being adopted as God's children. We talk about them being siblings of Jesus Christ. We talk about them being inheritors of eternal life. We understand that baptism is the beginning of a long relationship, of an ever-deepening and committed faith and a commitment to Christ's saving power. But across the letters of Paul and the book of Acts, since baptism is accompanied by the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit doesn't come for nothing, the Spirit comes into the lives of Jesus' followers as a driving force, as an empowering force to do the will of God and to proclaim the gospel. So just like Jesus, when we are baptized, we should expect that our baptism will do the very same thing. That by baptism, yes, we become children of God. Yes, we become brothers and sisters of Christ. Yes, we are inheritors of eternal life. But we are also to understand that we are thrust out into the troubles of the world, into the temptations of life, not to be swallowed up by them, but to resist them, to confront them, to overcome them, where we can to bring an end to them, so that the mercy of God reigns. Yes, indeed, we are pushed into a world that is filled with temptation. And not temptation about whether or not you eat that last piece of chocolate cake. Temptation to live like the old Adam. To walk through life without trusting in God's faithfulness and God's love. To walk through life with an unwillingness to finally submit ourselves to God's will. Resisting is not an easy thing. Jesus was thrust out into the wilderness, and in the ancient world it was believed that was the place where demons dwelt. But we don't have to go very far to find temptation. We certainly don't need to find a wilderness. Even here, with all of the people that surround us, and the, in, the, in, the, in the midst of the civilization in which we reside, 
we can feel as if we are living in a wilderness, alone, forsaken, sometimes devoid of comfort and bereft of companionship. But mark carefully what this gospel says. Jesus was driven into the wilderness. And in the wilderness, he was tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts. But Mark reminds us also that the angels of God attended to Jesus, saying to the people who were listening to this gospel and to us that we are never alone. That God is always attending to us. That the Spirit never forgets us. The Spirit is always with us. Even when we walk away, even when we wander from our baptism, even when we try to put our baptism off to the side so we can do what we want, the Holy Spirit remains with us to bring us home. Jesus, at the other end of his ministry, went to the cross resisting all temptation. And of course, would that that were true for us. We're not always able to resist. We don't always do the right thing. We don't always choose the right path. We don't always go in the right direction. We don't always treat others as we ourselves would like to be treated. That's a nice way of saying that we fail. But Jesus doesn't fail. And that is good news for us. Because we are baptized into Jesus' life, into Jesus' death, into Jesus' resurrection. And even when we fail, even when we lose, still we win. Because the victory of Jesus Christ is ours. Our sin is not held against us. Our failure does not belong to us. But in Jesus Christ, the victory does. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard our hearts and keep our minds in Christ Jesus.
believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the Church, the world, and all in you. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your Church throughout the world the spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction, and help us to mitigate the damage our carelessness has wrought. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Come to the aid of all who have borne the brunt of this past week's brutally cold and stormy weather. Bless those who offer shelter and food. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer especially Marilyn, William, Paul, Liz, Frank, Alan, Bill, Ruth, Janice, June, James, John, Jean, Anthony, Maureen, Bob, Happy, Pat, Linda, Olivia, Susan, Eleanor, Diane, John, Ed, Arlene, Chrissy, Faith, Charles, Will, Eric, Lori, David, Bob, Grace, Tom, James, Jacqueline, Ken, and those we name silently for your throne of grace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern, and guide those who are starting their first community classes here at Trinity next week. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the midst of things we cannot understand, we ask for peace and consolation for Connie and Charlie and their family upon the death of their niece, Kathy, who entered the church triumphant this past week you are the hope of all who trust in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
beauty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, you call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. <coughs> Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. <clears throat> in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.